In this video, I'm gonna show you three hip mobility hacks. We're talking about functional fitness, but the real trick today is I'm gonna show you one concept that I think people miss all the time when they're working out. And if you could just figure out this one thing, it would make a lot of things make a lot of sense. But first, welcome to the Anatomy of Therapy. I'm Dr. John Sobolski. I've been a practicing doctor, practicing chiropractor for 10 years now. So if you have comments, please leave them below. You see that little that little thumb button? Click that, that's the like one. Help people find this channel. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. But let's get into it. So we're talking three exercises, great mobility movements, but let's talk about the main concept underneath all of that is one thing that makes your exercises so much more powerful, so much more potent, lets you have a great exercise, and that is repetition and rhythm, okay? Think about repetition and rhythm. Anytime you've had a great workout, you were kind of just in the zone, in the flow, right? As they say, in the flow, no one says that. I was in the flow state. That, that's a thing that people used to say. Uh, but you were just kind of in the zone, in the rhythm. You just had some rhythm. So why not build in some rhythm from the jump uh, so that when you get to these cool exercises uh, that you are in rhythm, that is when people get hurt. That is when people find themselves in my office, switching scenes all the time, find themselves in my office when they're out of rhythm, when they're out of sync. Um, so let's work on some rhythm and maybe we'll get a little bit of flexibility and mobility in there as well. Welcome to the anatomy. I just already said that. Let's just get into this. Jeez, all right. Okay, so this first one, right? This is the hip extension guy I've been talking about. I did this on my, the reason I picked this one exercise is because we're talking about hip extension. We Everybody loves some good at hip extension. This is for the hip flexor, for the obliques on the one side, especially if you're using this arm over here. Um, but when I did this the other day, um, my Instagram kind of blew up. People were talking about this exercise. And what I really did was just did this exercise on one side, this over and over, over and over. I did the same movement. I did 30 on each side and really focus on pushing, whoop, 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 come back boss, whoop. Okay, so I focus on pushing this arm down and pushing these hips up. The other thing I thought about was a little bit of thoracic rotation going this way. So you're going to feel some opening of the lats on this side, but then some closing of the back of the shoulder on the opposite. So this is a posterior rotator cuff strengthening exercise. The biggest thing though you're going to feel is these hip flexors, uh, the front of your hips right there kind of right. Well, there we are, right there in the front of your hips, and also these obliques, and also these lats out here, okay? This is really gonna open up some stuff that gets stuck when you're sitting in postures like I'm sitting in right now, um, rounded on the phone, looking at stuff, right? It's not helpful, but doing this exercise kind of over and over and over again, repetitiously and with a little bit of rhythm. You can go back and forth or just pick one side, bring the hips up and down, switch to the other side. The rhythm of this gets your body into rhythm. It breaks you out of the mental lock you've had during the day and really helps you to reconnect with your body as they would say with this one. And it really does. I'm not a woo-woo kind of guy, but you, we do get a little out of touch with our body. And as we do this, you'll start to feel how where your hand hits on the ground, where your hamstrings are going up, if the back of this shoulder feels good, if you can really twist your spine around. Now that is one thing you really need to do. As you push this down, really twist this spine around. I like to reach this arm out. I really reach the arm way up. So then I get a good stretch through the lats, through the obliques and the hip flexors, which is one of the biggest muscles we talk about all the time in terms of uh, things getting tight. So this is the first rhythmic one. It's a hip bridge, it's a one arm. You're gonna go into a flex state. You're gonna swing around and go back to the other side. The repetition of this could not be more beneficial for you. Let's go to the second one here today. Let's talk about this rhythm and the hip flexibility. Um, building a flow state from Jump Street. So this one is great as well. This one is a more of a, a sagittal plane, forwards and backwards, right? Um, it's kind of like a duck walk, except we're just focusing on shifting our weight forwards and backwards. As you push this heel down and then you kind of lurch your body forward, we should again kind of feel the hamstrings working on this side, which again is anti, so this one's gonna hit your hamstrings, which is anti-hip flexor, right? Same on that side, easier to see. But on this side, as you go put that heel down and push forward, it's really using your hips below 90 degrees. So in this one, we're using our hips above 90 degrees, i.e. the seated position in relation to the torso, of course, I, I see that this is barely above 90 degrees. Uh, but in relation to the torso, we are now in an extended state in our hips. So we have to think about it in relation to something else, right? Um, 
quite simply put. Okay, so back to this guy. It's kind of like the duck walk. You've probably done it before, except I want you to be able to shift forward and shift back repetitively. One of the other things that people get caught up with this exercise rep repetitively and with some rhythm, building in that flow state, like I said, is going to be right here this rounded back posture. Now I've heard some good comments. Again, leave a comment, hit the like button, smash the subscribe thing, uh, tell your friend. Uh, but if I've heard some Stu McGill comments, right? So we shouldn't round our back if there's load on the spine. We shouldn't load the spine in a flex position. I'm all about that, that's fine. Don't check my Instagram stories yesterday because I was loading it. We can talk about the Jefferson Curl in a whole other podcast, whole other episode. Listen to our podcast once a week it comes out. It's the best. Me and Bobby Riley get into it. Uh, but you're allowed to round your back if there's no way. So so the, the discs are not really stressed in this position. What we're really doing is trying to get some rhythm with our hips below 90 degrees. Can you get your hips into an ultimately flex state like this? reverse it and switch sides. So it's about switching and rhythm. It's about alternating and rhythm, rhythm and alternating. It's all about that. Now let's switch to our last guy. Um, and this is going to add a little bit of twist and torque. So whereas this one was more of a sagittal anterior and posterior learning to control your shift forward and back, this one is still forward and back, although it's not purely sagittal plane. So what we're gonna go into is this shin box. We've talked about this 90-90 to position. This is an external rotation. This back leg is an internal rotation. Torso is generally upright. What you're gonna do is push this knee down, bring this leg forward, step through, and then you're gonna really lean into it. So we've got some hip abduction here, abducting away from the body, away from the body, right? And then this guy is also abducting into external rotation. This is external rotation now as well. Uh, this is kind of known as the pectineus stretch, right? That's the big one that they, they do with this. So the pectineus uh, is a muscle behind the knee, but this is a great groin stretch. You're gonna get a lot of uh, 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 great groin stretches with this, which is again, very similar to the postural muscles uh, of the upper back. When we sit, those the groin muscles and the postural muscles of the shoulders and back can become weak and just not used. So we want to rhythmically wake them up before our, we work out. You get some groin, you'll get some glutes, okay? Uh, the groin is a massive stabilizer of the hips. One of the ways that we can inhibit the low back in therapy is using the groin muscles. It's a classic PNF stretch, but one of the most neglected areas is the groin. So go ahead and let's wake up the groin, but let's do it rhythmically. So we go forward, we reach back. We're going into that position and out of this position. So on the front end, you really see this leg working. This is going to be his right leg. So you're going to see that right groin get a good stretch. You're going to be able to put some weight on that right foot. As your hip is out in extra rotation, you'll notice that it creates kind of an arch here. Whereas you can see in this one, his he doesn't really have great arches. Let's see if we can see it right here. You see this foot that's not a foot with a great arch. Okay, but then once we put our body into, nope, not that guy. Uh, once we put our body into, or we really push in that extra rotation, stretch that groin out, i.e. knees out, kind of like when you're squatting, activating the glutes, what happens is it rolls that midfoot, it, it supinates the midfoot, right? Extra rotation builds arches. So if you got a flat foot, this isn't gonna fix your flat foot, but you need to start somewhere. Uh, this is a great way to do that. Now, the, that's the second part of the exercise. The first part of the exercise that it, I really wanna direct your attention to now is this first leg, okay? Because that is how you're going to begin the movement. So let's do this in slow motion, actually. So as he goes, he is pushing, you'll see all of this is passively pa pushing down into the ground. He is shifting his weight forward just a little bit. This back leg might be pushing a little bit, but most of the work should be done, in fact, by this leg here. So we're getting an extra rotation bias here and learning how to reach forward. And then we're going to get that stretch again on the groin on this side. Then he's going to have to eccentrically bring that back. You'll see now this foot is in the air, right? So all the support is on this right leg, okay? This is very similar to a little bit more advanced version of like say the bird dog where you're on one knee. This would be the next one. It's kind of the fire hydrant, right? Where they kind of lift it out to the side. Uh, but 
uh, in this position, it's getting a little bit more advanced. Um, so we're getting a lot of work on this hip and the opposite. You're gonna do these on both sides, obviously. But I wanna show you this hip so you can see how this hip is rotating over here. He's gonna come up. He wants to cheat with his hand there, my man, Yasser. But really push this knee down. It's gonna be hard at first. You can see, again, this foot is in the air. All the stability is going through this knee. So this leg is his, you can see this is almost kind of that 90-90 kind of squat position where the knees are out, except we have a different point of leverage. We're gonna talk about leverage in an upcoming video. I need to talk about that a bunch. We forget about leverage. It's another thing we don't use a lot. But this exercise is getting a bunch of different things. We're working this hip one way, we're working this hip in the opposite way. And if we can do it rhythmically, we can kind of align those hips to work rhythmically together. So work rhythmically together with your hips. Prep yourself, get in the flow state for your war with your warm up for your workout and consider rhythm when you're trying to do these things. Really helps you to reconnect to your body, woo woo or not. Uh, they're super great. Click the like button, leave a comment below. Thank y'all so much for listening. We've got a bunch of other videos. There's gonna pop up two videos here in a second. If you haven't seen them, I would highly recommend. They really go along with these hip stuff. They'll be very complimentary themes. Um, I've chosen them just for you. Have a great day.